Hey guys, welcome to the first FSA podcast and actually the second installment of our adulting series. This time we're joined again with fellow FSA members. Hello everyone, what love people! Welcome! <laughs> this is Seda by the way. <laughs> hi, ako yung kapatid, si Shai. And uh, hi, I am the fourth person. Uh, so Remy, for those who grew up here, can you tell us what was your childhood like? Oof. In general? Yeah. Um, Pwede naman tayo mag-Tagalog, no? Okay. In general, interesting in the sense na madami yung adventures na I guess based on reactions when I tell people about them. Unusual, even for those na lumaki sa Philippines. Yung iba, relatable. Yung iba, unusual. Kasi mix ako ng pasaway pero at the same time mm, hindi masyadong eventful yung buhay ko. Other well, childhood. Outside yung mga pasaway moments. Mm. More or like that. Parang ang hirap kasi generalize yung buong childhood mo into one idea or one sentence. Yeah, true. Mostly ganun. Uh-huh. Stupid question. Mm. Ano ilang taon ng childhood? Ganun naman tayo. Ako from like, ano yung max? para mga like, 12? 12? Okay. Basta be 14 years. Okay. okay. Until 14 years, years siguro. 14? Oh, okay, sige, sige. Yeah, 14, siguro. 14 na sa saints ko na ako. Sa so, paghahalala tayo, Kansa. <laughs> Inadjust natin ng two years. Kaya rin <laughs> Ano? Childhood ko, it's a bit different. And ano siya? Um, maraming... Um, ang tawag dito? Parang I always had to adapt in a way at certain levels and stages of my life. Para I spent my kindergarten years in a province and then grade school I went different to the urban area which is in Manila and then by the time I hit 12 years old I had to change schools but all, I always had to like do some adaptation of some sort in certain stages of my life but at the same time fun din siya super fun kasi parang feeling ko naranasan kong maglaro ng mga classic Filipino games. Langit lupa, tumbang preso, natuto akong gumawa ng pada gamit ang banana leaves. Ano ba? Yeah. So, parang yung banana leaves, igugupit, like, what do you call that? You tear it? Para mag-create ka ng, mag-create ka ng, what do you call that? They're not frills. Nalala mo yung leather jacket ko? Na may ah, ganito. yung parang sa Hawaiian skirt. Parang yeah. tassels? Oh, yeah. Pero, Pero it's like, it's using a banana leaf. Ano pa ba? Yun. Yun siya. I would say na it's really fun. Pero it was a bit challenging in a sense that I had to do some certain um, adaptation of some sort with this day of my childhood. Yeah. Ako? Wala ko maalala kasi masyado. <laughs> <laughs> Probably up to 14. Pero kung up to 14, up to 14, madami-dami naman ng slight. Parang, ano bang significant stuff. Dramatic yung grade school life ko eh. Daming bullying, ganyan, daming nag-aaway, scandal. Bully ka o nabully ka? Ganun? Pareho. Wow. Oh, pareho. Bully ka pala siya eh. Oo. Parang, ano, bully, parang pareho. Actually, gantihan yung bullying namin. So, ginaganti, binubully ko yung mga nambubully sa akin. Para siyang uh, Filipino teleserye. Kadenang uh, ginto type. Wow. <laughs> Pero grabe. Pero wala naman rin kasabunutan, ha? Yung, at saka yung mga nanay namin hindi nag-aaway dahil sa Sardinas. Okay, so, okay lang. Um, Yung, wala. Yung childhood ko, normal. Parang wala namang, ano, dramatic stuff masyado na nangyari. Yeah. Ang alam ko lang, ano, baliw pa din ako. Tsaka tamad, tamad-tamad ko. Ganun lang. <laughs> were, were you guys, like, mature for your age? Feeling ko, 12 years old self ko na mature na ako nung pagtungtong ko ng high school. Doon ako parang, Wait lang. I have to be more responsible with so many things now. Parang ganun. Kasi parang, ano, doon ako nagmas, nagmature na. Kasi, ano yun eh, sanay ako na medyo malapit yung school ko sa bahay ko. 
Yeah. Yun yung unang time na ang layo-layo ng bahay ng school ko sa bahay ko. Yun yung time na wala yung sister ko sa same school. Mm-hmm. Tapos, yun yung time na ano din, na sobrang nagbago ulit yung mundo ko. I was surrounded with all girls. It's no mm-hmm. longer a co-ed school. It was all girls. And iba yung culture. So, I would say, doon ako pinaka nag-mature. Tapos, nagkaroon din ako ng personal goal at that time. So, kaya feeling ko doon ako na para, oops, I have to step up. Alam mo na ba yung gagawin nyo? Like, you had, like, a dream na, like, what you wanted to do. I was very Dora the Explorer. Nung bata ako, I wanted to be a doctor. I really wanted to become a doctor. Pero, because of my grandma, it changed. Yeah. Just because... I grew up with my grandmother telling me two things. One, ay bago pala yun, gusto ko rin pala dati maging fashion designer. Like, ang dami ko dating din drawing na clothes, clothes, and stuff like that. Gusto naging, I wanted to become an actor. I wanted to become a teacher. Na dati sumibili pa ako ng chok, tapos nag-drawing ako dun sa door ng cabinets namin. Pero, anyways, what really changed things is my grandmother. So, I grew up with my grandmother telling me two things. One, takot siya sa dugo. Kaya daw hindi siya pwede maging doktor. So dahil bata ako, sabi niya, takot siya sa dugo. Feeling ko tuloy, pumasok sa utak ko na ako rin takot sa dugo. So now I don't really know if I'm afraid of blood. So hindi yeah. ako naging doktor. Second, my grandma, my grandma is an accountant. And <laughs> I grew up with her telling me na pag pumirma ka, libo. Libo ang pirma mo pag accountant ka. In some way, it's true. But mm-hmm. now that I'm working, I found out it's gonna take you at least 10 years bago ka makapirma. Actually, di mo pa nga pirma yun eh. Bago ka actually magkakumita sa pirma mo. Hindi ako yung typical na... Kasi ang high school and grade school ko, isang school lang. Tapos wala siya yung may leveling up na exam. Automatic, mm-hmm. if you graduated grade 6, mm-hmm. pasok ka na sa high school. Yeah. So, to me, in transition from grade school to high school is basically, palit lang kami ng color ng pants. From brown, naging black. So, mm-hmm. hindi siya kasing drastic nung uh, ibang schools. Kuya, hindi ba kayo nagkaroon ng parang ano? Entrance exam? Quote and from, from grade school? Kasi alam ko from my experience, nagkaroon kami ng parang exam eh, na parang pang grade 6 lang. Mm-hmm. Na pag pumasa ka doon, alam mo na na pag graduate ka, pwede ka mag-enroll sa high school ng school na yun? Wala akong matandaan. Ang alam ko, wala talaga eh. I think, yung iba lang, na medyo mababa yung grades, they had to go through remedial classes and pass those to make sure makinroll sila. Pero kung yung grade mo, mabot to a certain cut-off, I guess, mm-hmm. or quota, mm-hmm. automatic pwede kang mag-enroll to high school if you choose you chose to do so. Okay. Then, kaya nun, since tuloy-tuloy lang siya, basically from prep all the way to fourth year high school, isang school lang ako. Tapos parang every year was like, okay, new year, bagong section, bagong classmates. Yun lang. Hindi ko ramdam, hindi, ko, hindi ako nagkaroon ng moment na, ah, kailangan makapasok ako sa school na to. All the way up to college. Basically, mm-hmm. in college, I took as many tests as I, ca- as I could. Mm-hmm. So, as many universities. Or basically, yung top four lang naman yung uh, tinake ko. Well, yung isa hindi ko na take due to circumstances. But um, otherwise, all the way to college, hindi ko talaga alam kung ano yung gusto kong course. Parang, ang sa akin lang is two things. Basta makapasok, two, um, makapag-football pa ako. Hmm. Which in football as in soccer. Yeah. Just to clarify. Pero short-lived lang yung soccer, football um, dream. Otherwise, I got in the UP, but it took me six years yeah. to get out. And out of the six years, three years of those, medyo aimless. The first three years, medyo aimless pa. Mm. It took me another three years to actually find my goal or dream or more on my place. Yeah. And then yun yung tinapos kong degree. And now, mm. I am in New Zealand. And you're enjoying your degree naman so far. Oh, you, kasi... You feel like it's meant for you. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. it came to a point nung after ko mag-shift na, na may... I can't really remember when, 
or why I had that thought. Pero naisip ko na lang, ito pala yung matagal ko nang hinahanap, like yung satisfaction na nafe-feel ko yeah. when doing, ano, doing the classes, uh, all the things I was learning, all the eh, experiences. Mm-hmm. Parang dun ko lang na-realize na, ah, ito na yun. Ito na yung hinahanap ko. Parang this is where I feel at home and where, I ha- where I'm happy and I can see a future. Yeah. Ang gano'n. I think a lot of students can relate with uh, with Remy in terms of not knowing what you want early on and just just discovering it, study it, you discover, oh, you like this. Because I'm kind of like the same. The first year, I didn't really like engineering because I, I suck at math in high school and I was more of like an English student. So engineering was like out of the equation. Talaga. But then I realized, that, oh, parang Good money in a month after, and it's a good career. I know it's it's a bad reason. Like, I don't no, know. it's not a bad reason. It's just yeah, a very Filipino reason. Yeah. yeah, but like you know, I'm I'm trying to love it, and yeah, because important to get to love what you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I uh, know. Actually, being in this in that state where you actually don't know what to take is not such a bad thing because mm-hmm. you get to explore. I think. Yun yung naging siguro the only, at least for now, one of the cons that I could think of with the path that I took. Kasi parang, ang nangyari, I already, I was dead set on getting accounting. Na parang, from high school pa lang, like Philippines pa lang, the elective that I took was accounting related. Yeah. One of the subjects that I did in year 13 was accounting related. And I didn't get to explore much. Mm. Na parang, when na parang if hindi ko siya nag kung nagkataon hindi ko siya nagustuhan ng like for example second year third year it would have been already too late mm. kasi parang I've already done a lot of things accounting related that parang it's gonna be so hard for me to just drop it and then move to something else that I really don't know about so yeah. I guess I was just kind of lucky na some somehow ah one of the tips that I took from my Comlo professor Comlo three Comlo sa ano siya eh? Um, oh my God, financial siya. Basta financial siya. Tapos parang ang sabi niya, ang tip niya para sa mga tao na wala pa talaga idea kung ano yung gusto nila is either you find you're passionate about. If you don't know what that is, find what you're good at. Kasi if, yeah. if you don't know kung saan ka, di dun ka na lang kung saan ka magaling, is ano, yung pangatlo ata parang just keep exploring. Mm-hmm. Like, stop thinking about shit, I still don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, just find it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just happy na kahit papano, you know, I'm kind of good at what I do. For those who were not born or raised in the Philippines, in a nutshell, can you tell us how it's like traveling? Mm, it's just mga, to start things off, it, pinakamandaling imagine para mabuo yung concept is papasok ka pa lang sa school, Hunger Games. <laughs> yung pauwi mo, Hunger Games ulit. Hindi pa kasama yung pagdadaanan mo sa school. Agreed! Yun na yun. Well, Agreed. Again, yung sa akin, medyo weird kasi yung since yung grade school, high school ko, isang school lang. That school was around 5-10 minutes away lang sa bahay via public transport. Tricycle. Ganyan. So, parang never ko naramdaman yung ah, ang layo ng bahay. Pero pagdating ko ng college, ang nakatira ako sa Marikina. Ang school ko, nasa sentro ng Manila. Like, TAF, PGH, Pedro Hill, um, Faura area. Mm. So, ang travel time ko, one way, on average, was two hours. One two way. Hours. So, on a good day, you spend four hours travel time. On a good day. It can go as much as three and a half one way. So, yeah. that's what, seven hours of your day in traffic? Yeah. Traffic na hindi rin siya yung pwede kang magbasa or makinig ng kahit anong music or whatever kasi mm-hmm. una, siksikan, hindi rin naman makapaglabas ng libro. Tapos, pangalawa, hindi ka 100% safe. Yeah. In the sense na, eh, gusto mong magpahinga, gusto mong mag-aral, pero parang kailangan at the same time, imagine mo yung mata mo nakatingin sa libro, pero yung isa, nakatingin sa paligid mo. Yeah. Hindi ka naman chameleon. So, hindi mo kaya yun. Parang nagbabanday ka pa rin. So, hindi ka at ease. So, basically, kung magbabasa ka ng libro, uulitin mo rin ulit yung libro pag-uwi, pag-uwi mo sa bahay. So, parang, bakit pa? Hindi, 
mag music ka na lang. Parang ganun. Yun na yung best idea. Basically, ad- adventure siya at saka struggle. Very, a struggle. I would say every day. More than anything. <laughs> Kuya, I would say it's more than a struggle. Kasi, when I was in grade school, malapit lang yung bahay ko. Like, nilalakad ko lang siya. So, it wasn't a problem. Same with Kuya Rem. Hindi mo iisipin na ano. Ang iisipin mo lang, magigising ba ako tomorrow morning enough na hindi ako malilit para tumakbo. Pero nung high school, that's when things change. Lalo na nung third year and fourth year kasi I went further away from my school after my mom moved here. But anyways, uh, so, kakalook up ko lang sa Google. So, from my, from Valenzuela to Saints ko, where I went to school, ano siya, 16 kilometers away. It's just 16 kilometers away. Pero, I have to wake up at 4 a.m. to prep so I could leave the house at 5 to ride two jeepneys para makarating ako ng LRT. By LRT, siguro 6 na. Or like, 5.45. Which is a good time to ride the LRT na walang ganong tao, makakaupo ka. So you can still like take a nap. And then probably from Monumento to Vito Cruz, kung saan ako bababa, that's probably around 45 minutes. Yeah. I think 45 minutes. So pagating mo ng school, probably around, wala pang 7 eh. Siguro mga 6.45 pa lang. Medyo sarado pa. Hindi pa naman sarado ang school. Pero sobrang konti pa lang ng tao. Parang, ang aga-aga ho kasi ang start ng school ko is 7.30-ish. Yeah. So, nandun ako for a good one hour para maiwasan ko yung dami ng tao. Like, if nagkataon na nakarating ako ng LRT, then for example, 6.30, 6.15, ang haba na ng pila at sobrang siksikan. Like, malilate talaga ako. Tapos, pag uwi ko ng bahay, ganun na naman ilang oras, halos magto-two hours din ako kuya na biyahe. Tapos pagdating mo sa bahay, sobrang pagod ka. Ako, ang ano ko naman kay Kuya Remy, the only reason why I can't do assignments or whatnot in LRT is because it's so jam-packed. Umuwi ako like 6 o'clock. So halos lahat ng tao pa-uwi ng 6 o'clock. It's rush hour, sobrang jam-packed ang LRT. There's no way that you can do anything. Like, literally, nakatayo ka lang. Yun lang yung magagawa mo. Nasabi ko nga, kung meron akong skill na redevelop sa LRT, that is to sleep na nakatayo. Kaya talaga babagsak. Ganun talaga siya. Tapos, kung jeep ka ulit, by the time actually nakarating ka na ng bahay mo, sobrang pagod ka na, pero kailangan mo pa rin magbasa. Ang ganito, may isipin mo, habang nandung ka na nag-aaral ka, isusumpa mo yung araw-araw mo. Pero once nakagraduate ka, Mm-hmm. It's either, tapos, for example, in my case, nakaalis ka din sa situation na yun. Tapos nakapag-experience ka ng kung paano ang schooling sa ibang country. Mm-hmm. Ang sarap niyang balikan kasi ang dami mong kwento, ang dami mong experiences. Mm-hmm. Pero kung tatanungin ka, so gusto mo bang ma-experience yun lahat ulit? Parang hindi. Parang ayoko. Parang mas masarap siyang, mas masarap siyang balikan lang you know, <laughs> sa memories yeah. kesa yung i-relive. So, Masaya siya in hindsight. Pero pag nandun ka mismo, na na-experience mo, most likely, hindi mo may enjoy. May enjoy mo lang siya pag nakakawala ka na sa situation na ganun. Feeling ko kasi, I wouldn't say na hindi, kasi parang, if I'm just gonna experience it once in my life, I'd say, okay, deal, babalik ako. Pero kung uunitin ko ulit, teka lang, pray na lang, chill ka lang. <laughs> kasi ano hmm. eh, Sobrang thankful ako sa experiences ko. Well, this is academic side of things, ah. Kasi syempre, yun naman talaga yung pinaka- ginawa ko doon. Academic side of things, sobrang thankful ako sa experiences ko sa Philippines. Because it really shaped my ethics. It really shaped the way I do things and the way I see things. So, sobrang nakatulong siya when I moved here. Um, pero hindi siya masaya. There's, I wouldn't say that it's fun. I don't think anyone in the Philippines would say it's fun. Especially ako, na for example, I experienced high school here. It's no way near that. It's no way near that. Because here, at least experiences ko as year 13, I get to do, I was able to do badminton, I was able to do debating, I was able to do theater on the side na nag pa ako. If you're in the Philippines, you can only choose one. I was only able to do dance and studying. There's no way that you could do all the other stuff. Kasi talagang walang oras. 
Kasi parang, lalo na kung ano ka, lalo na kung, ako tawag dito, academic achiever ka, there's no way that you, could, you would be able to do it. Like, sa Philippines, I would say, ang academics, patayan. Legit na halos papatayin mo yung sarili mo. Kasi like, doon ako nakaranas ng legit, hindi ka matutulog. Kahit na anong classic preparation ang gagawin mo, may mga times na hindi ka talaga makakatulog. Tapos submit ang quality um, kind of project. So, ayaw mo naman na parang magsasabit ka lang for the sake of submission. Yeah. Pero, I also struggles na yun. I learned the value of recognition. Doon ko talaga na-appreciate yung small recognition, regardless of what it is. Kahit na sa tipong sabi lang ng teacher mo na ah, ang galing-galing mo dyan, grabe. Sobra siyang grabe yung satisfaction na mararamdaman mo talaga. Mm-hmm. So when I graduated from Saints ko, kasi doon ko talaga narana lahat ng struggles ko, talagang sobrang satisfaction naman talaga. Like, sobrang tuwang-tuwa ako na sabi ko, I wanna graduate. <laughs> like, legit. Yeah. So it really shaped who I am, in a way, when I moved here. Like, things changed. It helped a lot. Yes. Yes, Sena, you talked about, like, learning something from your struggle. So what are the lessons that you guys learned? Um, I know. Mm. Our one is preparation is key. Sahan, mm. preparation is key. Second, well, una muna, preparation is key kasi parang dumating ako sa point na Siyempre, first, first year ako nun sa Saints ko, I didn't know things na parang sabi ko, okay, there, there has to be a way for me to adapt to things while at the same time um, properly cope up with everything that's going on. So parang mm-hmm. hindi lang ako super maculture shock sa lahat ng nangyayari. So parang feeling ko nun, may mga bagay na alam kong kaya kong i-prepare. Eh. For example, academic-wise, kaya mo i-prepare yung sarili mo dun eh study before you go to lectures and things like that. Kaya mo siyang gawin eh. Pero may ma- para at least, kapag may bagong iba to sa'yo, kahit pa para makakahinga ka, mm-hmm. hindi ka malalunod sa lahat ng kailangan mong gawin. Yeah. Tapos, second, ano talaga, um, if there's a will, there's a way. That's a good like, one. If there's a will, there's a way. Kasi, when, when I was in grade school, I wasn't Hindi naman sa academically incompetent ako, pero hindi ako kasing sipag nung nasa high school ako. Mm-hmm. Like, I was a different person when I was in grade school and I was also different when I was in high school. And I think things changed when I was in high school in a way that I was in a different world. I was thrown into a different world and there was a challenge thrown at me by my mom na sabi niya, baka naman this time you can do it na. And mm-hmm. sabi ko naman, feeling ko naman kaya ko. So, pinush ko talaga yung sarili ko to the limits na kahit bago ko, sabi ko, kakayadig ko. And I was happy naman sa results. Yeah. Tapos, go lang ng go. Kasi, nung grade school ako, kahit na ano, kahit na hindi ako super academic, ano, achiever, pero di setting grades ko, ah. Wait lang, di setting grades ko. <laughs> hindi nga lang kasi ganun na high school. Pero, nung grade school kasi ako, feeling ko dun ko lahat na-explore, eh next explore kung mag-host, next explore kung mag-dance, and explore ko lahat ng extracurricular activities na hindi ko yun pinagsisiya. Na sabi ko, if babalik pa rin ako sa grade school ko, I'd do the same thing. Kasi dun ko, dun ko na-explore kung sino ako outside of academics. I was able to explore my talents. I was able to explore and see things na hindi lang sa libro. Yun. Tsaka, it kind of built up my character in a sense. Kasi you meet so many people in those areas. Parang ang hirap pa rin mag-isip kasi ng iisang lesson lang. I guess, from childhood, mm, well, kung titignan kong lesson as something I wish I did as nung time na yun, mm-hmm. be more flexible and don't be afraid to try new things. Mm-hmm. Kasi parang dati, well, given the circumstances na wala ka rin naman time or yung opportunities na nag-existent, pero parang thinking now, parang hindi naman dapat yun yung, hindi lang, parang barrier lang naman yun. It's not an absolute na hindi mo magagawa. I guess, dapat, yun, be more flexible and try things that interest you. Kasi ang problem sa schooling, well, hindi naman sa schooling itself, pero din sa environment ng um, schooling sa Philippines is, usually naka, ano ka, naka, typecasting. 
Mm. Kumbaga, dapat, kung matalino ka, ang ginagawa mo, academics lang. Weird kung nag-sports ka rin. Yeah. Ngayon, kung mahilig ka naman sa sports, parang, sige, mag-excel ka sa sports, yung grades mo, mediocre. Best. Ngayon, syempre, may mga rare occurrences na magaling na nga sila sa sports, magaling pa sila sa ads. Mm-hmm. Pero, most of people lie in the extremes. So, parang ganun. But in the same way na kung ma-arts ka, medyo mahina ka sa sciences. Kaya kung sa sciences ka, medyo mahina ka sa arts. Pero, within the school system lang yun eh. And, na- medyo nakikage ka nun. But if you try to be more flexible and you know, explore more things, mahahanap mo naman yung balance between both, which is actually the ideal. And yun yung sa real world, you need both. I guess yeah. yun yung problem sa uh, education system as a whole in the Philippines na parang you either start sa sciences track or sa arts track and then stick with that. Parang if you, in the middle of it bigang gusto mo mag-try ng the other way na sasabihin sa'yo is you miss na okay, go. Try, go ahead. Try it. Uh, you might have fun. Ang sasabihin sa'yo is wag sayang lahat ng pinaghirapan mo up to this point. Parang itatapon mo lahat ng yun. Tapos baka magsisi ka lang din. So parang sisip mo, o oh, nga, wag na lang. Kahit hindi ako masyado masaya dito, magaling naman na ako, tuloy ko na lang. So, there should be balance among like many things in life. Pero, being creative, eh, I mean, being flexible and daring. Yeah. Daring, yan. Can help you get that flexibility. Hmm. Na, I wish I had a bit more before. Pero, yun. Yeah. I guess yun, yun. Be, be flexible and yeah. dare to try new things. Tinatanong mo kami ni Kuya Rems kung ano yung schooling experience naman, diba? For yeah. someone na dito lumaki, kasi syempre kami ni Kuya Rems, ang feeling namin, it's very caging yung hmm. way ng schooling namin in the Philippines. Kasi alam ko, in a way, dito may certain flexibility. Eh. Yeah. So, how is it like studying here? It's, it's stable. Stable in a way na parang straight line lang. It doesn't really promote growth. Parang ganun. Kasi yeah, parang... Actually, na-realize ko na parang from primary, intermediate to high school, it's all easy, easy, easy. Like so lenient yung schooling system. Then when you when you come to uni, parang lahat bibigay sa'yo sunod-sunod mga assignments, deadlines. So parang Oh, gulat ka. Ito sa Philippines, bata ka pa, tinitrain ka na na parang ang raming mga assignments na kailangan magawin at the same time. So, pagdating na uni, mag-struggle ka pa rin, pero it's not foreign sa yun. Yeah. So, yeah. Yun. Pero, life as a student, you go to school, you're in school, and you go home. So, parang everyday yun lang. Yeah. So, Okay. Mm-mm. So, yeah. Wala kang patinterong inalaro, di ba? <laughs> yeah. Kayo, kayo ba, guys? Yung bata kayo, mag-decide ba? 50-50. Parang may time na... Actually, hindi ako yung nag-decide nun, yung magulang ko. Sasabihin na lang, hindi, matulog ka na lang kaysa maglaro. Mm-hmm. Yung habit na after lunch, patutuluhin ka. Mm-hmm. Ganun. Yeah. So parang, yung mga kalaro mo, yung mga kapitbahay mo, mga bata sa alsada, naririnig mong nalaro sa labas. Kasi ikaw, nipilit ng patulugan. Kasi mga bibihira naman na makakalabas, well, speaking for myself, na makakalabas ka, syempre sila, dami ng pinagsamahan, lagi naglalaro. Ikaw, medyo feel mo outsider ka. So parang pag ganun, syempre, depende rin sa mood, bata eh. Minsan, i-welcome ka, feel mo, belong ka. Minsan naman, parang hindi mo type, hindi maglalaro ko nalang mag-isa. So, 50-50, parang matututo kang makisalumuha sa mga bata sa labas, pero dapat marunong ka rin marunong kang aliwin yung sarili mo mm. sa loob ng bahay, kung ano yung meron sa bahay. Man, feeling ko, siguro a quarter of my childhood, if up to 12 years old, nasa labas ako. Hindi nga eh, siguro until mga 5-6 nasa labas ako. Kasi probinsya ako eh, so walang ganong quote-unquote danger ng yeah. manila, ng urban life. So, legit na, sa labas ako, natuto ako maglangit lupa, sa lupa talaga. Mm-hmm. Natuto ako magpumbang preso, na lagi ako yung baby, like, 
pwede kong kunin yung chinelas, hindi nila ako tatayain. So, natutunan ko yun sa labas talaga. Pero, nilipat ako ng Manila. Dahil una, sobrang, tumira kami sa subdivision eh. And dahil ako naman, galing akong province, super shy type ako. So, hindi ako alas lumalabas ng bahay. Lagi lang kami nasa loob ng bahay ng kapatid ko. Hmm. Tapos, nung grade 1 naman ako, iyakin ng kapatid So, technically, wala akong ganun kalaro. Do, nagkaroon lang ako ng tipong friends na naglalaro talaga nung grade 2. Kasi nung grade 2, ang pasokan namin, I think, afternoon. So, mga 1 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, or sometime after lunch. Tapos, ang aga ko pumunta ng school, dahil sumasabay ako sa mom ko, so, makikipaglaro ka sa mga friends doon. Naglalangat doon pa pa rin kami, 10, 20. Tapos, nung grade 3, grade 4, 5, 6, medyo umaga na talaga yung pasok mo. Naglalaro na kayo pag lunch tsaka recess. So, hindi ako super larong kalsada. Pero naglalaro kami ng pang kalsada sa loob ng classroom. Yeah. Noong mga first year grade 6, nalilate na ako ng uwi sa bahay because of official school stuff. Na may halong konting kalokohan, pero mostly official school. So, hindi naman ako super bulakbol. Hindi ako ganun. Hindi naman kasi kami ni ate, bawal kami lumabas, ang kumo lang siya pero So, unless academic siya or school event, hindi kami lalabas. Sa bahay lang kami. Basically, it's school or bahay. Mm-hmm. Or simbahan. Yun lang yung tatlong pinupuntahan namin. Uy, nagmumul din naman kami pero... <laughs> hindi, yung kami lang. Yung papayagan na kami lang yung pumunta. Yun lang talaga. Parang, nung 13 ako, once ko lang na... Hindi, twice naman. Parang once lang yata kami lumabas na kami-kami lang tapos walang chaperone na. Pero kasama namin, family pa din. Hindi pa din din. So may chaperone pa din. Yeah. Yeah, yung mga tito-tito namin yun. Nag-ano lang kami, nanood kami. Mm. Yun lang. Pero taong bahay kami. Ako, I think so. Yeah, ako rin. Taong bahay namin. We've been quarantined our whole lives. So what is new? Actually, yeah. ako feel ko nga parang yung quarantine na to, parang ano lang. Parang summer lang, kasi hindi ako lalabas. Lalabas na ako kapag kailangan magsimba, ganyan. E ngayon nga, hindi na kailangan. Eh. So, wala <laughs> akong problema eh. Parang everyday, everyday Saturday, ganun. Kami ni Shai, we grew up with a big-ass family. Yeah, I mean, until now, we live in a big-ass family. <laughs> like, pag sa nagpa-party child, kami. Oo, childhood namin ni Shai, parang feeling namin every month may gathering sa bahay kung nasan si nanay. Great grandma. Yeah. Like, feeling namin every single month nagkikita kami. Lalo na pag nag-hit ang October papuntang December. Mm-hmm. Like, legit yon. Once a month nagkikita na kami. Uh-oh. Until mag-January. Kasi sa mga mm-hmm. sa 12 months in a year, September lang naman walang my birthday sa family <laughs> namin. So, Every every month talaga may dahilan kami para pumunta Mag-tita. sa bahay ng ano ko. Tsaka grabe kami dati pag pag Christmas, lagi kaming naga out of town ganyan mm-hmm. kunyari punta kami Batangas, may resort ganyan. Tapos party party. Tapos yung may games yung party namin, nagkakalaman si Relay kami kasi ganoon karami yung tao sa amin na may teams talaga. Grabe, grabe noon. Kaya sa lahat ng mga pupunta ng parties ko, alam niyo, gets niyo na ba bakit ako nagkakagana sa mga kaya? Oo. <laughs> kaya pala ang galing mo mag-isip ng mga games. Games? Oo. Sanay na. Yung pamilya ko, regularized. Hindi kasama yung talagang super extended. I guess yung mga first cousin. Ganyan. Yung mga kapatid ng nanay ko. Pero, medyo, ano ba? I don't want to get into too much details. Not because ayoko or touchy subject siya. Mm. Medyo sub-story kasi siya. So baka hindi siya interesting for other people. No, go long. Pero in the sense, um, broken family. Mm. And so basically, yung, I have an older sister and older brother. Um, they are half siblings. So half brother, half sister ko lang sila. Sa mother. So buong magkapatid sila. They have the same father. Pero ako, I have a different father from them. And I also carry a la- different last name. Ang gamit kong last name is yung maiden name ng mother ko. Ang gamit nilang last name, yung dalawang kapalit ko plus yung nanay ko, is yung last name ng father nila. Yung first husband. Uh, so, in that sense, medyo weird yung dynamics namin. Kasi ang laki ng age gap. Then, the back of eventually may realize mo, bakit iba yung last name ko sa 
rest of the family. Then yeah, explain sa yo. Then una, sa sabi mo lang, ah okay. Then as you get older, may realize mo ano ibig sabihin no, ano ni circumstances, blah blah blah. And then you get to the bigger picture, bigger family, may realize mo, ah kaya isa lang yung set ko ng lolo lola, parang ganon. Parang isang side lang ng family. Kaya medium size lang yung family na alam ko kasi half lang. Baga, mother side lang yung kilala ko. Yung kilala yung mother side. So in that sense, medyo, well, compared sa nila shy, yeah. definitely, <laughs> definitely downsized. <laughs> Pero medyo weird din yung family dynamics. Kasi hindi ganun kakalose yung generation namin. Yung yeah. generation ng parents ko, ng nanay ko, tsaka mga pinsan niya, mga kapatid niya, lahat kasi sila lumaki sa province. Mm-hmm. So close sila. Pero, from college onwards, parang lahat pumunta na ng Manila. Tapos iba, iba't ibang part ng Manila. Tapos, yung iba nag-abroad. So, yung kami, yung generation namin, hindi na kasing close-knit. So, may, ayun. Family-wise, may weird, hindi naman weird, unusual um, circumstances. But otherwise, you know, through friends that eventually you call or consider family na rin. And, yeah, basically, getting through life. And, nairaos din. Parang, nakalampas din. Pero mostly, it was mostly okay. Dynamics lang was a bit harder to figure out. Kasi, hindi, kaya, hindi siya katulad nung, for example, nakita mo sa movies, TV, or even books, na family dynamics. So, parang, you can't really base it off those things. Yeah. You have to experiment and try for yourself what works with your family. Well, in my family. And I guess for those who have similar circumstances. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't the usual family setup. But okay din naman. Yeah. Uh-oh. Ako, I, I, I feel like my family is really small lang. Because I have four cousins and they're all girls. Both sides are four cousins in total. So, so nag Yeah, nag lang so, so, two on my mom's side and two dad's side. Kasi dalaw, lima, lima, lima magkakapatid yung parent, yung mom ko. Lima sila magkakapatid. Pero dalawa, nuns. So, walang own family. Yeah. Isa, um, autistic siya. So, ano, tapos dalawa lang yung married and have family. So, yun na, kaya dalawa. Tapos yung sa dad ko, dalawa lang sila. So, yun. Tapos dalawa lang yung anak nila. So, so small lang kami. Pero, maraming, pag Christmas na remember ko, maraming mga kaibigan, um, may kaibigan ng mga tita-tita ko. So, tapos yung mga nuns, pag Christmas, so caroling, nagsayang kumakanta. So, kahit parang masaya pa rin yung anak kasi marami pa rin kami. Pero in terms of the family itself, it's small lang. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so far, we talked about the our past and our childhood. So, now let's talk about the future. I know. So, as parents... Oh, wow. Child, okay. Gawa muna, pwede. Gawa muna. Survive muna natin yung COVID. <laughs> Pero... Pero, pero as parents, what childhood would you want your kids to have? Would you want them to have the same childhood as you did? Simple lang yung akin. A childhood with a father figure. Yun lang. Ako naman, I'd say, syempre different circumstances, di ba? Mm. Iba yung environment sa Philippines, iba yung environment dito. So no, definitely, dito ka I don't know. I don't know where I'll be. Well, regardless, if it's not in the Philippines, well, even if it's in the Philippines, it's gonna be a different the time that I grew up in and where I grew up in because technically my child acquired my child is in the province and then mm-hmm. or I guess um I had a good childhood I would say I had fun um it shaped who I am struggles but I had a breakthrough in all of them so I would mm-hmm. say that kami ng parehas in a way na parehas ng feelings or parehas kami ng learnings na makukuha in a way Aho, I like the family aspect of, of my childhood. Same. Like, I enjoyed that. Although for me, um, siguro I would um, be a bit more liberating than my family is with me. 
Um, si ate kasi okay siya sa ganun. Ako medyo, medyo nahihigpitan ako sa ganun. Hindi ako makahinga ng slight. So, siguro, kung ako, I hope, kung ako man yun, hindi ko siya, hindi ko ma, hindi ako kasing higpit ng, sa kanya as my mom was. Or at least how I felt like my mom was to me. Hindi naman may higpit sila. Actually, ma, ano pa sila, mami? Ma, medyo mas liberating pa sila. Pero, you know, I would prefer a, just a tad bit more, ano, liberty. Yeah. Ano yung nanay ko? Scary. Pati barkada ko hanggang ngayon, takot sa nanay ko. <laughs> Tipong, tipong pag sinabi ng barkada ko, ay, magigalit nanay ko. Sasabihin namin, hindi, okay lang kay tita yan. Pero pag sinabi ko, pag ako nagsabi, magigalit nanay ko, oh, sige, umuwi ka na. <laughs> <laughs> Hanggang ngayon, kahit na ilang libong kilometro na yung layo ko, ramdam ko pa din pag nagsasabi siya. Na, yeah. Parang bumubulong pa rin siya dito sa, parang nasa tabi ko siya, bumubulong sa tenga ko na, umuwi ka na. <laughs> kahit na alam ko namang, wala siya doon. Yeah. Well, knowing myself, kung magiging parent man ako, talagang very liberated and very open naman. The thing is, uh, I just want a family that is whole. Mm-hmm. Kasi parang yun yung something na hindi ko na-experience. And kung ano man yung mga positive experiences ko from my family, definitely, dadalhin ko yun. Anything I can build on or improve on, dadalhin ko. So, all of the holes na nakita ko, I will try with whatever experiences and resources I will have in the future, I'll try to fill them up, fill them in. So, medyo mahirap magbigay ng concrete examples. Pero, yeah, basically, whatever positives I can take, dadalhin ko yun, then I'll supplement them with the missing half of my childhood, which is yung father side, father figure. Yeah. So, yun. Eh, and since missing na yung part na yun, I don't really know what all that entails. Mm-hmm. Kasi again, wala lang akong idea. Never talked about it. I can only observe from other people. Mm-hmm. So, and malalaman ko lang siya pag dumating na ako sa point na yun. Pag naging father na talaga. So, I guess, that's it. Parang, I can't really prepare much for it in the terms of, in terms of, ah, ganito gagawin ko. I, all I can do is like, mentally, prepare for it. Yeah. 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 Well said. At least we can all agree na we want to have a good family for everyone. For that. For our child. Yeah, true. Feeling ko kasi ngayon mas confident na ako sa sarili ko. And I think in some way, nakikita naman ng ibang tao yun. Hmm. But I think 10 years ago, hindi ako super confident with who I was then. So I think that's the only thing that's gonna be different from the way people would perceive me 10 years from now. Yeah. But other than that, I would say it's roughly the same. That's a struggle ko talaga no high school. Kasi dun ko talaga na patunayan yung sarili ko eh. And yeah. so many levels dun ko na patunayan yung sarili ko. Hindi lang sa ibang tao, pero mostly on myself. That, you know, I can actually break through. Mm-hmm. Kaya ko, man. Kaya ang kaya ko. Pero yun. Yun lang. Pero there is feeling ko sa inyo naman. Mas open-minded na ako ngayon kasi nag-ano na ako eh, nag-philosophy lectures na ako. So, nalaman ko na din yung, yung gusto kong, ano, yung mga, yung passions ko na, na, actually parang yung poetry kasi I started writing nine years old eh. Yung, as in yung rhyming. Pero yung passion, kasi ever since high school, all throughout high school, nagsusulat ako, may journals na ako. Hindi, pero like kung kaibigan kita, and then ten years ago, meet kita. In the 10 years. Uh, I Pero mean, personality years wise, parang pareho lang naman. Maingay mm. pa ako, feeling close to me. <laughs> yeah. I would say parehas lang siya. 10 years ago. <laughs> 17. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, I guess base. Base level Remy is the same. Mm-hmm. Pero I guess medyo mas unsure ako. Mm-hmm sa sarili ko dati. Kasi yun nga yun yung time na hindi ko pa talaga alam kung gusto kong gawin. So, my thoughts were all over the place. It's parang go lang ng go. In sometimes a good way, sometimes in a bad. Parang masyado kasing careless at times. So, more on ganun. Yung 10 years ago, me would be something like that. Parang go with the flow masyado. It's not, wala, there's nothing bad with going the flow. Pero at least have an idea or rough goal in mind as you go with the flow. Pero yung dati is go with the flow na nga, wala pang goal. Yeah. So, I guess, 
<laughs> if you approach me, if you, we were, we were friends 10 years ago, I would still be the same. Or yung, I guess yung outlook ko in life would be far more naive or ano ba, misinformed, let's say. Parang ganun. Siguro ano, kung tatanungin ako nung year 13 ako, kasi diba pinag-usapan natin yung schooling, tapos kung babalik ako, kung year 13 ako, tapos tinanong mo ko, gusto mo bang ulit bumalik sa Philippines para mag-aral? Basta ang ending ko, dito pa rin ako magka-college. Yeah. Kasi ako, oo. Kasi parang feeling ko, the reason na naging successful ako, kasi I consider my year 13 life or year 13 year as a very successful one for me. Kasi ano eh, parang feeling ko, na balance ko siya. Like, feeling ko that's my ideal year. Like, okay ako sa ACADS ko, okay ako sa extracurricular ko, nagawa ko lahat ng gusto ko. Pero that was only possible dahil sa ethics na natutunan ko from the Philippines. So, mm. things would have been really different if hindi ako nanggaling. Actually, specifically Saint Scotol. Kasi parang feeling ko, yung life ko ng grade school, yun yung pwede ko maging life dito. Mm-hmm. Kung hindi ako nag-saints ko. Like, yeah. totally free. Yeah. Like, it would have been, re- it, it would have been drastically different. Yeah. And I feel ko, okay, dahil sa saints ko, things ko. Mm-hmm. I was happy with that experience. Because I love my year, like, sobrang balance talaga. Sabi ko ngayon. Yeah. yeah, so the student life in the Philippines prepared you for year 13 and beyond. And so many levels talaga. And dahil mo matututunan na ano eh, and dahil mo matututunan na soft skills, mm-hmm. you learn how to manage your time well. Communication-wise, it's good as well. At least in the environment that I was in, it was really good. Um, you'd learn how to deal with different types of people. Because contrary to popular beliefs, kahit na old girls school kayo, you'd actually realize how different one girl is from the other. There's yeah. no such thing as just one type of girl. There's no such thing as that. You realize how people can be so opinionated that sometimes you just want to slap them in the face. You people who are so passionate about who's passionate about their causes. Like yeah. you a lot of different people. Yeah. So yeah. in a way it would really teach a lot of soft skills. There's beauty talaga sa struggle. So Chayali said now you went to an all girls school. Yeah. Alam ko, ikaw rin na, Mr. Paul Boys naman. How's it? May, may, siguro kalahati yung mga kwento ko, in, hindi siya pwede dun sa target audiences natin. Eh, well, all boys sa Philippines. So... Actually, I want to know ano experience mga all boys. Yeah. Because I, I went to all boys then pero dito. I don't know if it's different in the Philippines. Same. So, basically, walang, kumbaga, walang boring na araw. Kasi, mm-hmm. sa class of 40, Class, ang isang class average is 37 to 40. Sa isang, sa batch namin, average namin seven sections. So that's uh, almost 300 students. Wow. Kami, sa batch. So, tapos every year, nagsishuffle ng section. Tapos every quarter, nagpapalit ng seating arrangement. So, uh, every few months, iba na naman yung katabi mo. So, parang, wala well, boring. In the yeah. sense na laging may kalokohan, laging may magbibiro, laging may nangyayari. Either yeah. dramatic, comedy, or may nag-aaway, or may umiiyak dahil na-bully, or whatever. Pero, ano ba? I can't say kasi wala nga akong reference ng ano. To me, yun yung normal. Yun yung norm. Uh-oh. Pero, I guess, eh, ang hirap. Yung talaga, masasabi ko, maapaw ang testosterone. Siyempre, iisipin mo, sana ko, Ed, kasi siyempre, sana may babae. Mm-hmm. Uh, da- yung the root in you comes alive. Pero, tamang lang, di lang. Pero ako, hindi ako natutong naman di until mag-college. Anyway, medyo binawi ko yung mga ilang taon na naiwan nung nag-college ako. Anyway, hindi na po yung pasok sa childhood. Kung nag-co-ed ako, siguro hindi yung interaction ko or yung skills ko mas, I don't know, feeling ko mas na-refine yung ano ko eh. Yung chivalry, I guess. Yeah. Pero, yes. Pero modern day, modern day chivalry, ah, yung tipong uh, gender equality, hindi yung more on by certain aspects of me na na-refine mm-hmm. dahil all boys. Parang hindi ka rin basta-basta na-intimidate. Pero 
na build up din yung respect mo sa opposite sex. Kasi hindi mo naman lagi nakakasalamuha. So, pagdating mo ng college na bigang everyday may kasama ka parang you have to figure out how to properly interact with them. In a way, mag-agree ako kay Kuya Remy on, on one point pa sinabi niya. Um, ako kasi nag-all girls ako from high school. So, from 12 years old to 17. Well, magtatapos na ng 12 actually. 12 to 17, 18 actually. Yeah, 12 to 17 actually para jokes. 12 to 17 as all girls ako. So, medyo in a way, kailangan ko ulit matuto how to, you know, makihulubiro sa opposite sex. Pero hindi naman ako super duper nahirapan kasi ang daming lalaki sa pamilya namin. But, anyways, going back to high school. Um, all girls school, one of the things I'm very thankful for sa saints ko is because I was really surrounded by different types of girls. And most of them were really confident with who they are. Mm. And it, it kind of rubbed off on you. And it really built my confidence with who I am. Na parang, yeah, I'm actually a strong woman. And throughout my years in Saints Go, yun talaga yung still sa'yo, that you're a strong woman, you have a voice, and you can encourage other people to use their voice. Na, so parang ang tatang mo. No, <laughs> yun talaga siya. Like, talagang tuturuan ka nilang tumayo sa sarili mong pa. And you'd actually learn to respect other people as well and be open um be open to different perspectives. Cause you're you're all you're all girls, eh. Diba? In a way, medyo pare parehas kayo mag-react. Diba? So parang mo lang masyadong mag-clash. Even though you guys all have different perspectives, you have to learn how to accept one perspective from the other. Cause lalo na sa class ko, um, so two years, three years of my four years in Saint School, I was part of a honors class, and basically honors class ni ganong nagbabago yung tao sa class na yun. Usually pare parehas kayo. And the thing is, with the people in that class, lahat kayo opinionated. You're bound to be opinionated. Mm-hmm. So wala hang choice. Kung gusto mong mag-survive in peace, but at the same, because everyone will respect your opinion, eh. But you mm-hmm. also have to learn how to respect theirs. And I think that's one thing that I really valued from that whole experience. You get to learn different perspectives, understand different perspectives, and learn to accept that their perspective would be different from yours. Mm-hmm. Yun siya. Tapos, ano siya, sobrang, um, sobrang freeing in a way na dahil pare-parehas kayong babae. <laughs> Parang gora lang. Kung ano gusto mo sabihin, sabihin mo. <laughs> Wala, wala kang kailangang isipin na shit may lalaki. Shit, kailangan kong isipin ko ano iisipin niya. No, you're not gonna think that way because you're all the same. Mm-hmm. So, sasabihin mo lang talaga. Yeah. Mahihiya to be who you are. As in, sisigaw ka lang, Sina, my pants! <laughs> Ganun. <laughs> oh, ganun talaga ka-open. Ganun talaga. So, ganun talaga siya ka-open. Kapag magpapalit, minsan harap-harapan kayo, nagpapalit <laughs> sa yeah. isa. You form a bond. That's oh, it. Okay, Sa lalaki, minsan, bigang may uutot, sisigaw ko na lang kahit nagkaklase. Putang yun ang baho ng utot mo. <laughs> Kaya pag tinatara ko, gano'ng katagal mo na kilala yung best friend mo? Um, ever since I was five. So, mga 15 years. So, yeah. I think kaya hindi super nag-enjoy siya siya compared mm-hmm. sa experience niya. No? Tsaka, syempre iba eh. Kasi, first, first, um, ang daming, ang, ang layo niya sa Philippines. Tapos, Dahil pumasok ako, year 10, hindi naman year 9, may friends na sila. So parang ayoko ding makisaw-saw sa friendships ng iba. <laughs> Choose yung ganun. Ayun pala, isa pa pa sa kailangan mo matutunan. Kailangan mo matutog na maban sa all girls school. Uh-oh. To learn how to fight for your right kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Kasi kaya ka nga nilang echample eh. Pero I think it's just, it's a test. And I think it's kind of natural. I think yung ganun, kahit anong school eh. Co-ed, private, exclusive, whatever. I think okay. every school may ganun eh, parang may hierarchy. Ko naman, hindi ko naramdaman yun sa grade school ko and kinder. Hindi ko siya, well at least hindi ko, na, hindi ko na alala ng kinder ko. Pero nung grade school, hindi ko siya naramdaman. Nakaramdam, so, naramdam ko siya ng grade school. Hindi, hindi ako nakaramdam.
random na tinetest ako ng mga tao na kailangan mong patunayan yung sarili mo. Naramdaman ko siya nung high school ako kasi bago ako. Feeling ko like kailangan kong patunayan yung sarili ko sa mga tao or else kakainin nila akong buhay. Parang ganun. Kasi ganun talaga yung vibe. Hindi, tsaka sa saints ko kasi talaga, since activist yung school namin, pag wala kang opinion, lalamunin ka nila. Kasi, lalamunin ka nila. Kasi parang you, you either, you either kung hindi, if you don't agree with them, you have to say no. Otherwise, if you keep quiet, they're just gonna swallow you alive. Legit. Yeah. Ah, so, dapat talaga you have a strong conviction. Yeah. So, so for me, ah, as in na form yung critical thinking Bapapun skills talaga. ko sa 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 science ko. Kasi, yeah. sempre, cok ka sa science ko don ko na na teacher ano teachers can commit mistakes and they'll admit to it mm-hmm. if if ano if students and tell you can them. fight. You can fight your teacher, especially if you think you're right. Hindi basta sa hindi basta, but yeah, yeah. Just surprisingly, hindi so sobrang madaming drama sa Pilipinas school. I mm. think ang pinaka madrama isang beses lang ako nagkaroon ng pinaka madrama sa high school ko. Isa lang sa four years ko don. Yun lang yun consider ko madrama. The rest it's a regular school. Yung alang orders. So thank you guys for uh, for joining our first podcast. Comment down below the topics you want for our next. Any way we can improve. Yeah, any way we can improve, and and also send your questions as well, because we will be doing kind of like a Q and A for our future podcast. Till next time, FSA out.